Welcome to part 3.5. Because the aimbot takes a bit of time, there will be two parts and in this part we will create all of the scripts and retrieve our player's information. Make sure to subscribe and like the video so you will get notified when the next part comes out. If you want to support me and download the source code without doing any work, then join the Buy Me A Coffee community and hit me up on Discord. Also, you're welcome to join me the next time I stream. It will be on the YouTube channel. Okay, so I am back with part three of the aimbot and ESP course. I did record one time. Uh, I tried to take the whole aimbot part in one go, but... Uh, 17 minutes in, it felt kind of... Even I was confused by what <laughs> what I was saying. So I didn't feel good and um, started over. So I think this would be two parts. The aim would be two parts because uh, we will create uh, multiple scripts to uh, keep track of and doing everything in one go will be overwhelming. Let's start a project first of all. It will be a forms application, .NET forms, with the 6.0 framework. Please choose the same to not get errors and so on. I will not help you. <laughs> if you're blatantly choosing the wrong uh, updates but uh, for the name you can call it whatever you want I will call it AC cool menu because it's cool dot net 6.0 if you don't have it install the latest update update and you should be fine Okay, my computer is a bit slow, but we have the our beautiful form here. Double click on it to get the code underneath and go to the form 1.cs. Yes. But uh, we will try to keep... Uh, we don't want to code in this area. We want to keep our heavy stuff, heavy artillery in other uh, scripts. So we don't have to clutter everything up hopefully it can be the case anyways so uh, first of all we will go into the project properties this is so everyone can run the application uh, go down to build platform target hit 86 so that's the 30 bit build um, I don't know why it's 86, but uh, I don't care either. <laughs> uh, when you have selected a 32 bit build, we will go into project, manage NuGet packages, browse, search for thread32. This is our memory library which contains uh methods that build on the write process memory and read process memory win api functions and made for c sharp so we don't have to make the dll imports and so on ourselves when you have installed the uh, class or library my bad we can close that one down and here we will create our first classes. So right click on your project name, click on add new item. Here you will choose class and here we will store the, now nah, let's, let's store our offsets first. So we will create this notepad into reliable data in here to use. Uh, 
we will make it public instead our offsets class let me close that one down steam can be a bit annoying uh, in our offsets class we will store offsets what a surprise but uh, we have some the offsets will be stored as integers first the view matrix or it would be the local player if we wrote off our notepad but who cares we will do the view matrix first which is either this address or this address uh, 6c was the offset from uh, to the top so it's minus 6c then we would uh, be at the beginning of the all of the matrices and so on uh, we don't know which one is our matrix yet but we will store this one for now this will probably change I, I already know the end results so it, it will change but um, I'll try to make it or the the tutorial course organic crash co crash course uh, we have our local player and then we have our entity list now we will move down to the offsets from the entity class so these are just offsets from the base module or the module base and these are offsets from player class or entity class and offsets from the entity class we have our head position so v head because it's a vector we have our feet which uh, 28 we have our our angles uh, after the angles we have our health which is an integer uh, we have our dead offset b4 I have the name then we have our team oh not that and the last one will be our current ammunition there we go so uh, when we're reading from the game's memory we just we can reference this offsets class and choose whatever we want here uh, we're done with the offsets class we could close this down but doesn't really matter uh, we have one no we have two more classes to create so go on your project name again click on add a new item and this class will be our data class so when we store all of the players in the game and our player and view angles and so on we store them in this data class or this is the blueprint it's not stored here and let's call it the first one entity so now we're creating our own very own blueprint of the characters in game uh, we had a vector 
no, we'll create the base address first. Or add the base address. So uh, we have the base address of the entity, so we can easily access it with other methods and so on. Uh, keep track of every bot. After that, we have a vector three, which we need uh, numerics. Numerics. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's 3D coordinates. <laughs> three floats. X, Y, Z. Uh, but that's the feet and the head. It. Uh, someone mentioned in the video before or the live stream. I don't know that uh, it was the camera position so you can call it camera position as well but I'm too lazy to rewrite my code so we'll call it head now we have vector 2 it could be also vector 3 so 3 floats I don't know I haven't researched it very precise but it's two values that is in our interest, which are the view angles. So you have the yaw and the pitch. Uh, public float. We have the magnitude and the view offset. You don't need to care about this one yet. That would be used later on public int health team current ammo and dead so if dead then player is dead wow last field will be the name you could add more stuff here just find more offsets to uh, fill out the bl the blueprint even more, but this is kind of what we need for the aimbot and ESP. So other stuff can be good, can be fun, but we'll stick to the fundamentals here. We will create another class, which will be the view matrix. Here we store all of the values, all of the floats, which is uh, 16 floats in a row. It's 4 by 4, 4 times 4 is 16. Public float. Come on. There we go. Thank you, autocorrect. Now we have 16 floats in a row in our view matrix to access. That's it for the data class. We will now uh, start on the functions class. So this is where it gets a bit tricky. The functions class or the method class, call it whatever you want, will be used instead of just writing methods here. Easy as that. So Right click, add new item. We'll call it, you can call it, I'll call it functions. I'll rename it anyways. So here it's methods instead and it's public. We will store some global variables here. So that would be our memory class. So the sweat32. That we need to be using thread32 before that. Public thread mem, the memory class. We also have our base module base. Uh, these are not assigned yet, so this is just null, but We'll have a constructor, so when we create an instance of this methods class, and uh, this will get filled out. 
Uh, let me just find it. Public. And now you use the same name here for the constructor. Mm, goes new. Blah, blah, blah. Here we get the process. So the memory, cl memory class knows which process to create a handle for to read and write. We don't need the dot exe yet. Uh, the module base will be the get module base. And here you write dot exe to get the main module. Uh, if you have another module, you know, uh, source games, uh, they use client.dll so in that case you would just write like that but we're using the base module and don't forget to use dash insecure in the startup commands in source games to not get banned all right good stuff uh, now when we create an instance of these methods it will get all of the relevant information after that, we should be ready to read and write stuff. Uh, let me think of what method we will start with. It's a lot of methods. So the first method will return an entity. It will be called read entity. Did I misspell it? I don't think so. It will take in a pointer. So the entity base will be needed for this uh, read entity. So, uh, if you remember, we had the base address uh, stored in the entity. This means we can just store the entity and then if we need to update the information, we grab the entity pointer again to just re read the stuff again. Uh, but we'll create a new entity. This entity dot base address equals the end base. It will not have a new entity base. That would be uh, weird. We will have some current ammo, which we use the mem dot read int. So the memory class, you can uh, tap on the point or dot my bad and here you can see all of the methods that work so we have a lot of writing stuff you can read you can read matrix you can read float read bytes read pointer read short read vector this is very nice I added it myself so if you want to read a position, you would just read vector free. Pretty smart, pretty cool. Uh, pretty rad, but the current ammo is not a vector. It's your ammunition. It's an integer. Uh, we will need a pointer or an address. So we have the base address from here. So I don't need to read any other pointers. And we have our offsets for the current ammo. There you go. So this will read. All right, so Steam is not.
Okay. <laughs> Always when I'm recording. Oh no. Go away. What just happened? Okay. Uh, we have the current ammo. We have our health. Okay, I just closed down my wallpaper engine. Are you serious? Uh, we use the same base address because we haven't changed the entity yet or anything like that. We have the team. So you get the gist of it. Did my headphones just die? Okay. <laughs> my computer is breaking down. <laughs> uh, you get the gist of it. We have information that we now store in objects which are called entities in our program. We store the position of the feet and now we use read vector free. Wow, we don't have to read three times, three floats, we just have to read one. Use the enter the base, of course, and the offset dot v feet. Look how clean that was. Uh, other vector will be the head. Just change out from feet to head. Pretty smart. Uh, our last data field that we will fill is the name. So here we use the encoding dot utf8 get string and dot read bytes very important to read bytes base address so I don't have a read string for the memory class yet I might add it in the future but it, it's pretty easy to just write this line so uh, we, we will read 11 bytes and convert it to a string and store it as the name. Now we have some useful information. We will return this entity as it is. Uh, we will not read the view angles and so on because uh, we will have different meanings for them. So uh, generic and read entity function uh, doesn't work in this course. You can make one, but at least I think it's easier to just compromise in other functions. So we will create another method here, which will be called read local player. It has to be the type first. Read local player. This read entity is for entities the local player is an entity but uh, they use different base addresses so or uh, other entities are in the entity list and our local player will be in our local player address this is why we need or i chose to create separate functions for them but we have our local player, which we use the now read entity. So make sure it's public, otherwise this will scream at you. Or at least I think it will scream at you. Uh, we read the... Mm. So uh, our local player, we first need to access or read from the module base which we stored here the .exe 
and then to the local player this will return the local player base so it looks a bit scuffed but that's it so here we return or we read the entity of the local player so we access the offsets again and uh, we will also read the view angles so after we have done this and tested it uh, I think I will end this part so I can help people get on the way or fix errors and so on before we continue I think uh, this was a lot in, it in itself to go through or maybe not maybe you guys are better at coding than I think but for everyone to get on the bandwagon I will create two parts instead of one so here we have the X so the X is before the Y most cases uh, or almost all cases so we have the view angles offset we read one float then we add four bytes because a float is four bytes and read the second value so we, re we return the view angles after that we just return the local player uh, we should when starting or no not, not at all but if we're calling this read local player we should return an entity with our information. Uh, let me start assault. Assault cube and here we're back at the form one dot script CS C sharp. Uh, we declare some global variables so here we have our methods we'll call it M because we will use it a lot of times and it's really easy to just click M or tap M once we will create our local player which will be global like that we will not read it yet we will in the load method uh, check for illegal cross thread calls we will just set it this to false uh, it doesn't matter at the moment but it will matter later on remove the question mark so now we declare our methods or we create a new instance rather of our methods and this will read or get the assault cube process it will get the module base it will uh, initialize everything for us and we can now hopefully call read local player so uh, let me just create a variable so uh, right click after you this is just um, this is nothing I just added it so we can click or right click and add a break point point after that run it make sure you have a salt cube on okay so it hit the breakpoint the question is now did it return our local player? So you can see a cool menu dot entity. Click on the little arrow here. 
and it returned nothing. How nice. Uh, I made a, an error somewhere. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, let me go and see what the problem is and come back after that. Okay, uh, I didn't make any errors. Uh, I just forgot to <laughs> assign the actual local player or our <laughs> local player up here. I just wrote this. Oh my. So to fix that, just write local player equals and dot read because this returns is not it's not a function that outs the local player. That that's my bad. So when we run this now, hits the breakpoint and local player. Uh, you can see the coordinates. You can see the the current ammo is wrong. I can see that. <laughs> It says 555 five, five, and so on. But we have view angles, we have the team, we have the health. Everything seems to be correct, but the ammo, which isn't that important. So, but uh, this is the first part of the aimbot. So, I'll make the next part who knows when. I mean, this part got to like 30 minutes within no time. And we made two functions or two methods. Uh, next video will be focused on our methods and not so much testing. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to get the notification when the next part comes out. Uh, I think that's it. See you guys.